Lafu, so no need to worry. By the way, how's your trip going? As for me, I've somehow become the apprentice to two Cloud Knight Swordmasters. And I've been honing my... One of them is Yen Ching, the boy we've all met before. The other is Yun Li, the granddaughter of General Hua Yen from the Xianzhou Ju Ming. Both masters are super strict, giving me a real taste of how hard Sword Mai tried to drag him into this, but he refused. Then I tried to rope Don Hung in, but Master Yen Ching wouldn't have it. Still, I didn't let the difficulty get to me. In just a few weeks, my sword skills have improved a lot. Both my masters think I have unique talents in swordplay thanks to their guidance. I've actually made some progress. When I get back to the Express, I'll definitely be looking forward to your reply. Yours, March 7th. March's sword skills are really coming along. She'll hold her own just fine in the war dance. Uh, just you wait and see. I'll show off my skills in the ring and win a match. I'll make boop. <laughs> Can you believe it? March 7th has actually become a pretty decent sword master in such a short time. Are you sure he wasn't laughing at you? Oh, shut up! <laughs> it's all thanks to your amazing guidance, Ma- Miss March, you're really getting the hang of wielding dual swords. If you're keen on advancing, trying out different Sanjo blades could improve your touch. Oh, let me see. Which sword is the most powerful? Single sword? Great sword? There's no such thing as the most powerful sword. It's all about the skill of the sword master. Yenqing, we... First, you didn't kick my butt. Second, you'll never kick my butt. Third, how about we settle this right now? Yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> and if I kick your butt, you'll drop out of... Why are you two arguing again? I thought things had been improving between you lately. There was talk that the leading disciples of the Law Fu and Ju Ming generals were supposed to face off in the war dance. But for some reason, they suddenly teamed up to train in a pre- Tomorrow is the big day of the war dance. Shouldn't you two be focusing on honing your skills instead of you're... Oh, that's right! You're the pink-haired fox! This is Mr. Chaocho, the healer working for the general of the Sienjo... Ah, got it. So, you're the participant attending the war dance on behalf of the... Sorry for the misunderstanding. I don't know anything about martial arts. I'm just here on the general's orders to take care... If you know nothing about martial arts, why were you smirking earlier? <laughs> Well, my curiosity got the better of me, I suppose. When I heard Miss March's pondering from my professional experience, cleavers, slicers, chopping knives, and carving knives are all just tools. Kind of like frying, sauteing, boiling, and deep frying. It's like your sword teaching methods. If you align your ingredient, for example, golden eggplant tastes best when fried. Cloud peppers with stir fry and yellow. Oh, all this talk about food. Are you a healer? Why are you talking about? Well, it's just a metaphor. The medicinal school I follow on the Sanjo Yaoqing is called the Ranja School. So, you're the general. I'm a healer. <sighs> but anyway. 
A cook who isn't interested in health doesn't make for a good advisor. Seeing the way you're looking at me, it's obvious you think I'm just some feeble academic who likes to blabber on about martial arts. But, in reality... Seriously? Trying to save face in front of kids? Do you recognize this bottle of medicine in my hand? No. This is called tumble dust. An extract from an exotic flower named Yabra. Ugh, is it poison? Well, it depends on how it's used. With just one drop, it's able to numb a patient's body during surgery, increase the dose or the potency, and it'll slow the metabolism, making the blood thin and resulting in the loss of all senses. Even long-life species cannot escape. This thing can save lives or take them. It's more powerful than the swords in your... That may be so, but still, I prefer... So huh. Looks like I did get you all wrong. Hey, hey, why the insults all of a sudden? I'm just sharing some medical knowledge here. Not persuading you to poison. Seems like you get real excited when talking about poison. I can't tell if that's an honorable thing. Picture this. Two individuals. The one standing is full of malice. The other lying down in the throes of combat where life and death hinge on a singular moment, every surviving the battlefield reshapes all notions of worth. Be it integrity... Perhaps you've underestimated Yun Li and me, Mr. Zhao Cho. We may be young. <laughs> well, well. Then you should know that the war dance is nothing more than... When I was appointed as the ringmaster for the war dance, I asked the general... We Cloud Knights are supposed to charge into the fray, and this is how the general replied. To unsheath your sword in a ring is no... The war dance is the perfect chance to showcase martial virtue and forge alliances from all over the cosmos. When we... That's quite an insightful statement, Yan Chi. Well, my apologies for being so short-sighted. I've been on the Lawfu for hearing you speak so highly of it has piqued my curiosity. Wanna see the Sky Splitter ship where the war dance will be held? Let's go! I bet you and Lee and Miss March haven't seen it either, right? Well then. Let's go. I'll give you a tour of. Looks like a lot of other visitors have also come to catch a glimpse of the sky. Uh, what's up, Mr. Jaucho? Nah, it's nothing. Do you see that airship in the distance? That's the Sky Splitter. The venue. It doesn't look all that impressive from this distance. The Sky Splitter is actually a decommissioned Lawfu military vessel. People aren't allowed on board until the war dance officially commences. Tomorrow, when the bell rings and the ceremonial cannons roar, I'll be there representing the Cloud Knights at Sianjo Lawfu. Since I was a kid, I've been training in swordplay and the art of war under the general. Every day, I'd swing my... I understand that I'm not like other kids. I never envied the toys and freedom they all had. I never found... Even in the thick of battle, facing down savage of each day, I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger. And I rack... But then, I faced a really tough opponent. And just one slash shattered my confidence into a thousand pieces. After that, I had to pick up the pieces and try to put myself back together. I often ask myself, why do I wield my sword? If defeat is inevitable, why do I continue to... While the general could teach me the art of swordplay, he couldn't teach me why I should keep on going. He said... But 
After talking with you, Mr. Zhao Cho, I think, as a member of the Cloud Knights and the General's Apprentice, I've had a wet. When I wield my sword, it feels like I'm letting go of everything. That's why. Oh, Yan Ching. So young, yet so grown up. Age doesn't really matter. All sword masters will under. Hmm. I get it. Looks like all the kids on the lock. It's not polite to ask a girl her age, no matter which Siando ship you're on. I'm not asking your age. I'm asking if you have a dream like Yen. You don't talk like a cook. You sound more like a TV host or something. <laughs> Need I repeat myself again? Well, I. I don't have a dream like Yen Ching does. The only reason I'm participating in the Ringmaster's Challenge is because. Sounds like that mind of yours is just. Fit <laughs> I bet you've got nothing better. My. father. was a craftsman on the Sienjo Jumi. Because of his foolishness. Since I was a kid. It's been clear to me that not everyone deserves to have a weapon in their hands. Giving them so, whenever I come across someone unworthy of a sword, I can't help but want to take it away from them. <laughs> Given that Yen Ch. Hey, what do you mean by an unworthy master? <sighs> I see. It's not easy for kids on the Ju Ming either. Well, it's better to have a reason for wielding a sword than to be lost and confused. I've saved countless Cloud Knights in my life, and there are plenty of exceptional warriors just like the two. What happened, Mr. Zhao Chow? Oh, oh, nothing. I was just reminded of some old friends. Judging from my professional perspective as a healer, both of you possess remarkable vitality. Your energies flow like raging. Well, we've seen the Sky Splitter and toured the Stargazer Navalia. I guess it's time to say goodbye. What? You're leaving already? But you haven't asked me about my. It's getting late, Miss March. Unlike you lot, I'm a grown up bound by responsibilities and duties. By the way, Yen Ching, is it normal to have so many people wandering around in an automated. Actually, this is a restricted area. But since you're all guests. I understand. Well, I'll take my leave. Uh, seriously? I just spent so much time thinking about my dream, but he didn't even. Now that we're done with our tour of the sky, why don't we take a day off? What? You want to secretly practice swordplay by yourself? <laughs> you know, cramming before a fight never works out. For some reason, seeing the sky splitter has boosted my confidence. So, I've decided. All right, I'll take you out of the Stargazer Navalia. To inspection. Why are there outsiders loitering in? Hey, kids, didn't your parents ever tell you to stay away from the Stargazer Navalia? I know it's an automated facility, but it doesn't mean you can just break it.
familiar with this place. He just dropped I knew that from the beginning. Uh, that Cloud Knight didn't recognize Master Yen Ching at all. What? <laughs> Is he famous on the Wafu or something? Not even the Cloud Knights on the Jumi, who all you have a... A Cloud Knight, a member from the Skyfaring Commission, and a craftsman. They're from various departments, and the reason for the overhauls... <sighs> I have a feeling that if we secretly tail them, we'll definitely catch these guys and follow my lead, and be careful not to blow up. Never mind who they are. Don't get too close, Miss March. Killed those lowly beasts. Those little brats won't take up much space. There are boxes all over this place. Just dump them into one and no one will notice. Cut the theatrics, Grulok. Even the slightest slip up could interfere with. So, where are we heading next? To check the freight skiffs. We've got a lot of preparations to do. Also, weapons, supplies. We've got to be well prepared. So, are they. Smuggler? I have no clue. But they seem to be moving those crates. I've... Let's just put the cargo here for now, all right? Then we'll move on to inspect the ships. Lord Moktok said that as soon as we're done, we're to board the freight skiff and leave this place. Don't worry, I've changed the shipping schedule. You two, come with me. This is just me. I keep smelling that stench of lowly beasts everywhere we go. Don't be so paranoid. Looks like they're planning to escape on the skiffs in Stargazer Navalia. They keep talking about their plans, but where do they come from? And what? Well, they're definitely up to something bad. Wait, uh, they did. Tread softly, breathe quietly, and make sure to keep an eye on them. Hide out of sight as soon as there's any sign of activity. Out of time, get off too hard. I'm We're leaving. We 
should catch up to them. Quickly! Official uniforms, but I'm pretty sure they're not. Uh, never mind who they are. Let's just film them. That way, if they. Star skiff with enough room to fit at least 20 of my men. I'll let the others know. Once we're past the checkpoint, there will be beast ships waiting for us. Lord Moktok is ready. The revival of our ancient bloodline. What did he just say? Beast ships? Who's there? It's those brats! I told you to get rid of them, but you didn't listen, you idiot! Wipe them all out! Morrison? Adusa! Die, you holy beast! World cleansing track. Stand still. Time to say bye. Boom. I defeated on the IPC ship. Wait, that means... Well, how did the Borison manage to infiltrate the Ciencho? It's not just a simple disguise of wearing our clothing and shaving their whiskers. They're somehow able to alter their appearance, to be indistinguishable from Fox. They even have official IDs for the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, and... and... Even the Cloud Knights? Let me check this fake Cloud Knights tag. Maybe it'll give us some clues. Lujun, an officer of the patrol defense squad? Huh? Wait! What's the matter? I encountered a patrol officer named Lujun before. It was a few weeks ago when we were transporting the Borison prisoners. They can forge official identities and move around the Sien Zhou without raising suspicion. Oh no, this is bad. Uh, even worse, if you find one cockroach on the ex- There are more Boris in hiding on the Sien Zhou. I bet their plan is much bigger than just stealing information. We've got to report this to the Seat of Divine Foresight. meet you in person, guests from the Astral Express. I'm Fei Xiao, the general of the Xian Zhou Yao Chain. Let me introduce our guest to you. The one dressed in green. He's the reincarnation of Inviter Lune, and the person behind him is the newest member of the crew. I've heard a lot about you. Outside the reports from the Law Fu, the Skyfaring Commission of the Yao Xing has also gathered plenty of information about both of you. I've been eager to meet you face to face for reasons.
That's right. But don't worry, this isn't a trial. I just want to have a chat with you. According to General Jing Yuan's report, the Ruin Legion is to blame for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, and all Arbiter Generals should... Over the years, the Destruction's minions have wreaked havoc on countless worlds, and the Alliance has been keeping an eye on them. But no one ex... The damage caused by the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis was far less severe than expected, which is good news for us. However, it was quite different from the Ruin Legion... While I trust the bravery of the Divine Foresight and the Nameless, I'm curious about some details missing from the report. I'd like to take this chance to have... Let me be clear, the questions I'll ask might not reflect my actual thoughts. So please don't take offense if any of my questions seem... Please go ahead, General. But keep in mind we can only answer based on what we know. And perhaps you already have the answer. <laughs> you have a clever tongue. I like it. The Merlin's claw is quite articulate. Right now, her intentions are unknown, and Jin Yuan wants us to be honest. Let's cut to the chase. Before the crisis struck, the Astral Express was guided here by a Stellaron hunter, a wanted felon, in an attempt to- However, everyone in the cosmos knows of the Stellaron hunter's reputation. So, why did you place so much trust in them? Apart from the Lafu, there are many other worlds suffering from Stellaron corrosion. For example, Yorillo 6, the world that the Express stopped at before reaching the Lafu, was one of them. To the Express, Stellarons act as roadblocks on the Silver Rail and pose risks to the warping process. And that's why dealing with Stellaron issues is part of the duty of the Nameless. Ah, I've heard about those problems caused by Stellarons. The Express connects various worlds, so it makes sense for you to take care of this. The Cosmos is a mess, and the Trailblazers are just doing their best to fix it. Let's move on to the next question. The report suggests that Don Shu, the master of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, colluded with the Lord Ravager and used the power. But here's the thing. Don Shu was just a chief alchemist. Even if she colluded with our enemies and summoned the Stellaron, how did she manage to bypass the Vidyatara guard? The answer seems rather simple, doesn't it? The preceptors of the Lafu abandoned their duty to guard the Ambrosial Arbor and colluded with the disciples of Saint. That's a possibility, but there's another scenario to consider. General Jing Yuan brought back Mr. Don Hung, who had been in exile. I never intended to trespass on the Xianzhou ship. If you had no intention to trespass, then why did you return to the Xianzhou ship before your exile? I was concerned about the safety of my companions so I had to act brazenly. Please don't worry, Mr. Don Hung. If someone must be held accountable. According to the report, Lord Ravager Fantilia is the mastermind behind the incident. She disguised herself as an amicassador of the Skyfaring Commission and traveled with you, only to vanish without a trace. there, fighting Fantilia alongside General Jing Yuan, but she absorbed the power of the Ambrosial Arbor and gained an almost indestructible physical form. So a pawn of the destruction wanted a flesh and blood body to live in. <laughs> oh, it seems that your answers have addressed all my generals. I am finished with my question. So what do you think, General Fei Shao, of the doubt? <sighs> The two Nameless have been honest in their answers, even though there are some tricky details. However, the three questions I posed earlier were not just for the Nameless, but for you too. First, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus grew uninterrupted on the Law Fu, yet the Six Charioteers were not aware of it. That was a dereliction of duty.
second, you believed in the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy and entrusted outsiders to solve the crisis, even granting them access to the Plague Mark. That was a Daryl third. You insist on holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor crisis, putting the- Merlin's Claw. Is this your line of thinking, or the Ten Lords? From the moment I walked in, I made it clear that the questions I'd ask- <sighs> The disciples of Sanctus Medicus were deeply rooted and had been plotting for a long time. I admit it was my- As for the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy, I didn't believe all of it, but in the end, the Law Food did survive the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. So? And as for the war dance, do you think I'm unaware of the risks? However, risks can also be opportunities. The Law Food has lain low for too long. I <laughs> Just as I expected from our but, unfortunately, ever since the report was submitted, the Alliance has been filled with rumors and speculation. Even within the Lawfu, they- So what are your thoughts on- As a fellow Arbiter General, I fully understand the- Personally, I think all these rumors are meaningless drivel. Across the sea of stars, the Divine Foresight knows better than anyone- Just as what happened on the Xianzhou Yao Qing recently. You mean, the Sienjo The scouts of the Verdant Knights have sent back reports that Borison are making trouble again. The Borison packs that were once divided and scattered have started swallowing each other up, forming larger and larger packs. An entity? According to the report, this entity isn't actually a Borison. It's a woman claiming to be the messenger of the Master of Immortality. She's described as having 12 faces and 12 pairs of fangs, as cruel as poison. <sighs> That's Fentilia. That's right. You're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Patina Justice or the Seer Strategist, this conversation might not be so friendly. I've always had faith in my instincts, so I don't doubt your good intentions. But the Alliance has its fair share of questions and doubts about the Law food. What's in this plan, General Fu? General Jing Yuan, you already know what has to be done. But since you don't want to be the bad guy, I'll take care of it for you. You need the final word from the Ten Lords Command. And for that, I'll have to ask the two Nameless to visit the Shackling. No, I'm not imprisoning you. While you're there, I'll ask a judge in the Ten Lords Commission's Interrogation Division to record a detailed testimony with the karmic mirror from both of you. I'm okay with that. Your willingness to help is truly hot. Then, as the Merlin's claw re Oh, there's one more thing. This testimony is for silencing the voices of opposition within the Alliance, but I- So? Exactly. Hule is locked up in the Lawfu's shackling prison. Since he is the broodlord of the Borison, I want to transfer him onto the Xianzhou Yao Qing and imprison him there. The recent movements of the Boris. It makes sense to have the Foxians keep an eye on their arch nemesis. Since you trust my judgment. <laughs> I was worried this would turn into a heated argument, but it seems like both of you are on the same page. And as for Hule, I'll send my lieutenant Zhao Cho and Moza to check on his condition in prison and ready him for transport. If there are... I'm really sorry about all this. But the... I'll call for a messenger to take you to the interrogation division. You just need to give your testimony. As you wish, General. As General Jing Yuan requested, everything is prepared for your arrival, and I am here to receive you. The judges at the interrogation division also know your purpose in coming. The Shackling Prison. I... 
have gone home. Don't worry about me. If you're ready, I'll open the gate for you. This is one of many entrances used for temporary access. Since you're not actual prisoners, it makes sense for you to use this entrance. What are you looking at? The shackling prison on the Lafu is completely different from the one on the Yaqing. Whether it's in the clouds or underwater, breaking free would still be a piece of cake for me. <laughs> still thinking about your old jailbreak tricks, huh? Forget it. You're free now. Just don't do anything stupid. Or... You'll see me again in just a few days. Taking Hule back to the Yaoqing means a lot to the Foxians on the ship, and to the General herself. Guests! My name is Shui Yi, and I'm here on orders from the Incarceration Division of the Ten Lords Commission. We're Zhao Cho and Moza. General Fei Xiao sent us to extradite the Borisin criminal Hule. We're here to inspect the conditions of his imprisonment and make preparations for the handover and transportation. I assume you've been briefed, Your Honor. Your visit request has been approved. I'll be your guide for this trip. Prisoner Hule, the warhead and brood lord of the Boris and Abominations of Abundance and the arch nemesis of the Foxians, is responsible for 2,000. 123 wars of aggression and countless associated crimes. Due to his heinous acts, he has been imprisoned in the depths of the Shackling Prison and subjected to the punishment of the Forest of Swords until the end of time. He shall never be pardoned. No need to repeat his crimes and sentence, Your Honor. He is the greatest enemy of us Foxians. The stories of his atrocities are... When it comes to visiting criminals, there are rules in place to ensure your safety. I know you've heard legends about Hule since you were children, but your knowledge about him is likely very limited. Only the judges of the Ten Lords Commission truly... It has been centuries since Jing Liu, the former sword champion of the La Fu, captured Hule. And during all those years, we never provided him with any food. Yet he somehow managed to stay alive. The Forest of Swords, forged by the Punishment Division, is a device of intense torment, used to execute sinful abominations. Most Borisin die within three days in the forest, but Hule is different. The complex rules are there because of his abnormal characteristics. Do you understand? I apologize for any offense caused. I've given you the instructions regarding who lays visitation. Please, make... And please, take this pellet before proceeding. No, I'm not taking random medicine. Then you won't be allowed to visit Hule. Just swallow it already. 
Ule is like all Borosin. He can release a pheromone called Lupita. Thousands of years ago, we Foxians were enslaved by the Borosin. Not because we were naturally weaker, but because of their Lupitoxin. This pill is for our own mental well-being. <sighs> I understand. I knew you were a reasonable person. Now that we've taken the medicine, Your Honor. What is it? No. Never mind. Maybe. Here we are. Her Honor hasn't arrived yet. Please wait a moment. Welcome, dear guests from the Express. Judge Hanya of the Interrogation Division. We've met before. Glad to meet you again. Please allow me to express my gratitude to you again for subduing the demons in the Fixtral Garden. Looks like while March 7th and I were clueless, you already made many friends. Even though you and I have met before, we can't show any favoritism under the Ten Lords. So, please do as I command as we head to Scrivener Hall and beyond. Don't do anything. This is not a place for ordinary mortals. You and Mr. Donna. Please lead the way, Your Honor. Please let me activate the mechanism before we all move forward.
amazing. <laughs> this place is filled with the cold air from the northern peak of the polar delve. Even the toughest long life species would have a hard time enduring this. This place is packed with boxes and crates. These crates... They look... A few days ago, the Spirit Fairs received reports about an IPC transport ship that was attacked by Borison. I had a feeling there would be trouble during the war dance. But throwing both the pirates... I heard the Intelligentsia Guild crafted something dangerous. We have many records in the Hall of- I caught a glimpse of the mechs in those crates, and they bear a striking resemblance to Boris. Well, business first. Let's keep moving. <sighs> Strange. I don't remember checking the containment facilities a second time. to the mechs and sealing the crates. How could these... It's just like what happened in the Artisanship Commission before. These good... 
The Alchemy Commission members examined them and found some unusual structures. These things showing up in the Shackling Prison can only mean one thing. A prison break. And whoever delivered these goods clearly wanted them to go through the Xianzhou's strict inspection process to show the Skyfaring Commission and Cloud Knights how dangerous they were. If these things already started taking action while nobody was paying attention, then the whole prison end to make things worse. Another group of visitors just entered the depths of the Shackling Prison. The messengers from and the prisoner they came to visit might be the target whom these wolf-shaped mechs were delivered here for. If that vicious beast manages to bring... Here we are. Have we arrived already, Your Honor? Shouldn't there be a cage here? The most notorious felons are locked away in the solitary delves deep down in the prison. Those delves can't be opened without proper authorization. The blue bird paves the path, and the Stygian lanterns illuminate it. Help me light up these lanterns, and the way to the bottom of the Shackling prison will reveal itself. given you the diagrams for lighting the lanterns. Please take a look. open. Once we descend to the bottom of the prison, please do not do anything reckless. Inside the delve behind this door is the greatest enemy of the Foxians. from the Yao Qing visit the Xianzhou La Fu once every century to check. Even though the Ten Lords Commission sentenced Hu Lei to the Forest of Swords, suffering every day for the rest of his life, I understand. Unfortunately, for the past seven centuries, they've had to return disappointed. If we can use his toxin to create medicine and save an innocent life, it might help balance out some of the sins he's committed. 